Numa Perrier has directed two episodes of Unprisoned on Hulu. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Numa, I wanted to start by asking you really big picture, what about the series and the story at the heart of it, and especially the two episodes that, that you directed really resonated with you? Yeah, well, when I first uh, got the first script for Unprisoned just to meet with the team to come direct, um, it was one of the funniest scripts I'd ever read. I was laughing out loud, which is always a good sign. Sometimes you chuckle a little bit, but I was really laughing out loud. And um, I really connected to it personally. I, while I did not you know, have a parent that was incarcerated, I was adopted and reunited with my biological mother as a young adult. And so I really connected to that feeling and that experience of reconnecting with a parent that didn't parent you um, and trying to form that trust and those bonds and you know the, the perfect blend of hurt and hilarious moments, <laughs> you know, coinciding with one another was something that I had lived and I really, really connected to it. And I knew immediately that I wanted to come on board the project. So I was very happy that they extended the two episodes to me. That's lovely. And I think it really comes through in, in the episodes that you do direct, because um, those are really beautiful, especially the sixth episode. And we'll, we'll dive into that in detail. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you first, though, about when you're joining a series that's new, but you're directing later episodes, what is it like trying to balance, you know, the style of the early episodes um, and what other directors are doing with what you want to bring to, you know, to the to the episodes and, and you know, your kind of vision um, as a director? Well, all of it, it's this, you know, very big creative challenge. You know, everyone's nervous. It's the first season. Everyone's also excited. It's the first season. You've got that freshness, you know, um, and having, you know, read the scripts and knowing that this was Tracy's, this is, you know, Tracy McMillan, the creator of the show. This is based on her real life. Carrie Washington is playing her. They're together all the time. Um, so all of it was just like this, this blend of challenge and creative freedom. So in my episode, in the episode six, the road trip, I knew that we would have an opportunity to do things that hadn't been done in earlier episodes because we're completely on location for that whole episode. Um, we're in another state. It's a whole other thing in terms of the story and also in terms of how we're actually making that episode. So the we had we got the chance to do something very different than what had even been done in the first five. And I think with this series, what they were really trying to find is that sweet spot between heart and humor. And I think that we nailed it as a group, um, but it was, you know, we had to very carefully tread through that. And yeah, I think in the first five episodes, uh, maybe it was leaning a little more on the sitcom side, but still trying to pull in you know, those those heavier elements that you were going to really get hit with by the time we got to the road trip. So yeah, just a, you know, a very delicate balance, a real intense collaboration between all of us to arrive there. But I think all the players involved is what really made it seem. Yeah, episode six, as you're saying, I think is really the emotional heart of the season. I think it's my favorite episode for precisely that reason, because it balances humor with a really deep dive into childhood trauma and, and family history. It's just so wonderful. So let's let's tackle that right now. Yeah. Um, you yeah. mentioned that you shot on location. Talk about you know, where exactly you shot in scouting because you know, Edwin's house, um, Edwin played by Delroy Lindo, the house, the exterior, so beautiful. I mean, the, the locations are really, really great. Yeah, so you know, we filmed this in the, in the heat wave, last summer's heat wave. And we were in Northridge, actually. <laughs> and our very first location, Scouts, was like, okay, it's going to be so damn hot, which is, you know, not too different from how, 
how it can swelter in Alabama in the summer, but really trying to find a place that didn't look so much like California or the high desert and, you know, kind of give us something that felt more lush. So, uh, you know, of course, working with all the departments for that, all our greens department, our production design was incredible. Um, our location scouts really, you know, gave us a lot of great choices, but that particular house was the one. It was the one that just felt like this is the home that you're returning to that, you know, was abandoned under duress. So it was kind of one of those things that when we saw it, we knew that this was it. There was also an abandoned piano <laughs> in there that <laughs> that really spoke to me. And, you know, although we never see it, we never filmed in that room. There, were, it just had all the all the touches that felt right, and we ran with that. Yeah, the the interior shots are are really evocative. Um, to I want to talk about the performances for a moment, um, especially Delroy's, because I really feel like his journey in this episode, and we'll talk about we'll talk about Carrie's journey in in episode yeah. seven. But Delroy in this one is so powerful. Um, talk about working with an actor who is so intense and brings so much kind of emotion to the screen, especially those moments where you know he's talking about the impact of MLK's assassination, and you get a beautiful push in on on you know him. Um, telling that story. Just talk about working with Delroy and, and figuring out, you know, the best way to capture his energy. Oh, my pleasure, because that's, you know, <laughs> a bucket list, dream come true. I mean, Delroy means so much, you know, to the world, but, you know, in particular to the Black community, like we came up on all of his films. He's our uncle. He's our father. Uh, you know, we love Delroy and um, he's such a committed, beautiful actor, and he has, you know, a very specific approach to the work and a very specific process that I've actually been trained in as an actor. So stepping on to set and, and you know, to delve into that a little bit, stepping on to set with him, um, you know, TV is breakneck speed. And one of my responsibilities as a director is to get everyone home on time, you know, not lose my day and not burn my crew while also doing this. And Delroy's process is like, no, we're actually going to slow this all the way down. <laughs> and because I'm familiar with that process and I love and respect him so much, we gave a lot of space for that. The entire team gave a lot of space for that. And he's so devoted to that honesty running all the way through his core and through his body. Every single take he's going and doing that work. And um, that is why you get the performances you get out of Delroy, because he is so committed to that honesty. He's so committed to the rawness of that emotion rising up in him and expressing it um, that we're all going to be affected by that. So we had a really beautiful working relationship. And um, yeah, I'm, you know, it's definitely a highlight in my career uh, to be able to work with him, watch him work and identify with his process so intimately. So that was incredible. Yeah, the care really comes across on screen. Um, another uh, moment in the episode that I love is Paige going into what she discovers is probably Edwin's bedroom from mm. his childhood and seeing mm -hmm you know, young Edwin under the bed. I love the way that the show, you know, handles childhood memory, um, you know, the kind of young child within. Talk about, because that's a moment that's really stylized and kind of, um, it, it, it's throughout the scripts of the season with young Paige, but this is really the only episode where we get to see young Edwin. Talk about, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of figuring out the visual for that moment, um, Carrie embracing, you know, the, the young Edwin. Um, it's just a beautiful moment. So talk about, how you wanted that to look and, and play out. Well, it was it was another scene that we had to walk through very carefully. We're in this house, there's dust everywhere. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, we're just, you know, you're you're already having such a physical and which leads to an emotional response to the location. So you, you know, you can feel the history in those beds, you can feel it in the walls, you can, you can feel um pieces of that despair that they were going through. And I think it's so incredible how Tracy and the writers um, really found a way to give voice to that inner child, you know, and to really personify it and cast actors around it. So yeah, that moment, um, we all knew that it was really, really important. We gave Carrie a lot of space to sink into however she needed to sink into it. 
And I think the minute that little Edwin falls into her arms, she just gave in and let those feelings overwhelm her, you know, and it, it's just a, it's just a beautiful, beautiful moment. And I think she really wanted that for herself in, in that moment. And she, and we needed it for the story at the same time. So when those things both come together, it's, it's magic. So yeah, Absolutely. she did that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we also get some really harrowing flashback scenes. They're very short, but incredibly mm -hmm. effective at, you know, communicating, you know, just kind of the, the terror that these kids felt um, about what happened to their mother. Talk about your vision for those scenes, too, because, as I said, they're short, very impactful. Mm -hmm. What did they look like on, on the page um, mm -hmm. as scripted? And, and how did you want to bring that kind of 1950s, you know, moment uh, to life? Mm -hmm. Well, they're very close to as scripted, but there were a few things that I, you know, asked for in collaboration with the writers because it was also important to me because this is a comedy slash dramedy. Um, not so much that we needed humor in that moment, but in that moment, we still needed to exercise some form of restraint around what was happening and how we're depicting it. So for example, I, I asked very specifically, it was scripted that the cops had a gun and I said, well, I would like to not have a gun. Um, I would like to have the baton. Instead, the baton felt more visceral. It felt more pointed to that, uh, that moment in time. And it brings out another feeling, whereas a gun gets us, it takes us over a certain line. It's like, you really wanna hit that moment, but you also wanna exercise a certain amount of restraint. And that was definitely a, a big part of my vision for those moments is, you know, to, to hit it <laughs> and pull back, you know, um, instantly and just let that sit with us. Also, it's whenever there's, I'm doing an episode and I feel like I often get uh, booked on episodes that have, <laughs> um, that deal with memory. <laughs> and I think that's part of, you know, becoming part of my wheelhouse now, but I'm always trying to express memory the way memory actually functions in our brains as well which is you remember tiny specific things you may not you can't necessarily recount all of it um but it'll be that one thing that sticks out to you and so you know maybe for that scene it was that baton that the cop had that net that was seared in the memory of young edwin so looking for those you know those things um you, to emulate memory, but also to have some restraint in the trauma that we're showing as well. Yeah, that's incredible to hear, you know, how impactful those small changes from, from the script can, can be, because I think mm -hmm. you're exactly right. Um, let's turn to episode seven, because as mm -hmm. I said, if, if that episode to me felt like really Delroy and Edwin centric, episode seven is really stand out for Carrie Washington and for Paige, because she's processing so much information internally and you mm -hmm. get to explore that, you know, through Carrie's performance and capturing facial expression. And it's just a beautiful performance. So talk about working with Carrie, especially on moments that, as you say, are funny and dramatic, but I feel like are a lot of internal, um, a lot of internal work is happening for Paige in, in this episode as she's really figuring out, you know, what's going on with her picker. <laughs> exactly. Well, again, it's like Carrie Washington is an icon of the world, but also very specific to the Black community that Olivia Pope is our girl, you know? <laughs> and so it's like, you know, we had the scandal watch parties and I told Carrie this, I got it out the way right away. I was like, look, it was, you know, <laughs> every week there, were, there was the party and everything, but it's like, okay, we're in a new unit of time. This is a whole new world. Um, you know, that needs its own space. It needs to be honored. This is a real person's life that we're depicting. She's also the creator of the show. She's right there with you every day. So I think, you know, for Carrie, very similar to Delroy, their, their, their approach to the work is very different, but what they want out of the work is absolutely the, the same. They want that honesty. They want that humor. They want that lightness of being. They also want to punch you in the gut at the same time. So you know, in episode six, she really got to explore, you know, you know, taking that dive and then coming up for air. And then in episode seven, <laughs> she gets to explore all of the 
insecurities in her and insecurities are funny um, and, and relatable. And so in episode seven, she really got to show the vulnerability of being in insecure in every area in her life, not just in her relationships, but in how she's going to face an audience and talk about her life um, and how she's going to deal with um, not wanting to be with someone and breaking up with them. There's all types of insecurities in that. And so I think that any insecurities that Carrie, the woman had or didn't have, she could bring that to the table as well in doing a brand new show um, that's based on a real person where there's, you know, kind of a lot at stake. So I feel like she really, she did a tremendous job and <laughs> Tracy and Carrie, you know, really became one uh, during the filming of this. And it's, it's very evident in the episode. Absolutely, no question. And one of my favorite scenes from that episode is, of course, through all the episodes, we get um, Carrie and Paige interacting with um, young Paige, played by Jordan McIntosh. Yes. But I love, but I love the, I love the scene in this one and the shot in particular that you give us of young Paige and Paige in the makeup mirror. They're kind of two faces. Oh yes, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> I love that shot. So talk to us about you know, composing that scene, composing that shot, and just working with Jordan, because I feel like that performance is so fun, and a lot of the humor comes from her, but it's also, you know, as we see throughout, really moving relationship between, you know, the two versions of Paige. It really is, and I can't, I can't say enough about Jordan and how she, you know, um, took on this role, and, you know, had so much freedom of expression and it's really really beautiful to see so again you know we talk about exercising restraint um even in the humor of that that's a lot of what I was talking to her about too it's like okay um let's find a way to nail this but pull it back right away at the same time and you know for such a young actress to understand that note and deliver it over and over again I think is really exemplary and you know she should get all the things for that but the second I saw that mirror you know director's dream like awesome mirror shots I'm like we're going for it you know <laughs> you know it obviously you know the mirror it represents so much it's their reflections of themselves it becomes this very meta thing it also looked so beautiful um and it was a moment where Paige is really taking a look at herself before this big moment where she's going to, you know, she didn't know at the time, but she's really going to share, you know, the core of herself with the world, you know, for the world to see. And so that mirror moment <laughs> was um, so beautiful and so effective be because of that. So, but yeah, it was mostly um, initially because it just looked so beautiful and they were already you know, preening and putting the lipstick on and everything. And, um, you know, I really wanted to go for that shot and it turned out nice. It did. Um, before I let you go, Numa, I do want to ask you about, you know, kind of building the stakes because the seventh episode, your last really uh, ends on a very dramatic moment, which involves Finn. We haven't talked about Finn um, oh as a character, <laughs> but talk about working, working with Finn as a character over these two episodes and then kind of leaving, you know, episode seven where it is, which is very stressful um, and obviously has really significant consequences for the rest of the season. Yes. Well, again, it's that, you know, um, heart and humor that, you know, <laughs> hilarious moments followed by, you know, you know, something more severe happening, which it was always about very carefully keeping that tone throughout. And so you have a whole episode that's full of hilarious moments of Paige being feeling insecure and hilarious moments of Edwin and Finn trying to connect, you know, generation to you know, I don't know what generation would be <laughs> for Edwin, but it's like, you know, you're very uh, Gen Z, young millennial versus, yeah, and just trying to marry all those things together. And then, you know, having that, that moment, you know, as a Black person, a Black man driving without a license, <laughs> but, you know, getting pulled over and the, the instant fear and danger and stakes of that moment was really 
not even something that I wanted to give away or show throughout the episode. I really wanted that episode to live in, oh, they finally bonded after going to Alabama together. This is the aftermath of that. Now he's learning how to play this, you know, cool card game. Now she's about to go do a TED talk, like they're on an upswing as a family and then boom, you know, um, because that's how it happens in life. And it was a moment where Delroy and I really locked in and um, Folly is such an incredible, nimble actor. He just allowed it all to happen to him and allowed it all to rise up in him. And I just held the camera there. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to do a lot of now let's go around and get this. Now let's go around and get that. Cause it was really just about boom. It was just about that moment, seeing both of them at the same time, how they're both processing the danger that's right there before them. And so, um, yeah, I just remember filming that scene and Delroy would just always check in with me like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> we only had to say yeah and yeah. And it was like a world of language between us, you know? Um, so yeah, it was a, a really, a really special moment to be behind the camera for. And um, I think it punctuates the end of that episode in a really strong way. It does uh, such incredible work. Uh, Numa Perrier, congratulations on Unprisoned. Thank you so much for talking to Gold Derby today. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.